Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Um, and this is all about how to submit design and submit a annual meeting submission proposal for our 2020 meeting in New Orleans. Um, we have with us the New Orleans program chair, Seth Kamen, and the vice chair, Kelly Brundage, and uh, they'll be guiding you from here on out. Uh, if you need to chat with us, uh, you can use the chat window in the um, go to webinar dashboard on your screen. Uh, and we may or may not open the phone lines up so people can just ask questions verbally at the end. Uh, we'll kind of play that by ear, but uh, chat window in the meantime is a good way to go. And if you have any technical questions at all, feel free to uh, ask me directly or just put it to everybody in the audience. Um, but without further ado, I want to hand it off to uh, Seth Kamen. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, good afternoon or morning, everybody. My name is Seth Kamen. I am the chair for the 2020 Annual Meeting Program Committee. Uh, in my day job, I am the Assistant Vice President for Undergraduate Recruitment and Strategy at the University of Baltimore, and I am joined today by my vice chair, and I'll let her go ahead and introduce herself. Hello, everybody. My name is Kelly Brundage, and I am the University Registrar at the University of West Florida, up in Pensacola, Florida, in the Panhandle area, and we're very excited to speak with you all today. All right. So we are going to go through uh, a couple of items today, but we first wanted to let you know that the 2020 meeting is April 5th to the 8th uh, in New Orleans. We're very excited to be back in New Orleans. Uh, we do a try to head in there every 10 years on the 10s. So this is the fifth or sixth meeting that we'll be having in uh, New Orleans, and we're very, very excited. Uh, because we're in New Orleans, we've got a lot of great things planned. We've also made some major changes to the program itself, uh, and we will be releasing that type of information as we get closer to the meeting. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what we'll be doing in the session today and then jump into the material. So I'll be handing it over to Kelly. So um, we're going to go through a little bit on developing sessions, how we do that. Uh, definitely walk you through, provide some great screenshots that you can use as a reference in the new system that we have um, been working on over the last year uh, for submitting sessions, give you some key important information, and then as Mike had alluded to, give some time hopefully for some questions and answers. So some things to consider. Um, we know that maybe some of you are serving on a committee and some of you maybe are um, totally new to this process and we're hoping very excited either about submitting a presentation or considering doing a presentation of some type or participating in the 2020 conference. Um, so when you're looking at doing a presentation or how do I go about creating and designing this, we, um, these are some of those core tips. Looking at um, are there new topics and kind of rely on yourself and what you know is going on in industry or those that you're working with or what emerging trends are you seeing or hearing as you're talking with your peers or um, other coworkers that you work with in the state. Uh, aligning with our ACRO strategic plan, that's very easy to find and locate. You just go to ACRO.org, type in strategic plan and you'll find it. Hi, we all do this in our daily jobs, so not too hard, is just looking at where are we focusing on and how do those things connect back to things like our core competencies, the strategic plan, all of those um, key items that are registrar and admissions officers. We definitely have, we have a whole area and looking at, especially with the competencies of the career and professional development track. And so I, if you've, participated or had the opportunity to come to the annual meetings, you know that we don't just talk technical, we don't just talk our daily jobs, but we also talk about how to be mindful and grow. Um, also, we're looking for best practices and ways to integrate with our technology. And everyone has something to say. It doesn't matter the size of your institution, the type of technology you use, or the system, we can all learn from each other. Um, and we can all glean things from each other, whether you're fully automated or manual. We are always looking for um, new presenters. We're gonna go into that a little bit, but we have designed the system too to allow for new presenters. Not that we are not all lovely people and have great things to say, but we really want the membership to be represented as a whole and not the same people every single year with four or five presentations, but that it's a great mix. We also acknowledge that many people need to be selected to present sometimes in order to, to attend the conference. 
So we're very conscious of that as well. Don't panic if your presentation is not selected. We have alternates. We use our alternates quite a bit. And that can also turn into webinars, articles, publications. We keep, we keep looking at those things. So just, if you have a great idea, who knows where it can lead? Um, and we're really looking at these topics, helping to grow the attendance at the conference, really, really representing the diverse community that we are. Good presentation. Obviously, we all want to be very engaging with our audience. And so one of those, um, Big key things is just to make sure we're not reading from our slides. ACRA, we provide a lot of great resources, especially when um, presentations are submitted on um, tips and tricks, on doing a presentation if you've never done one before. If you've done a presentation, but you know someone who hasn't, maybe that's in your office or that you might be planning on taking with you, to the conference or going to the conference, it's always a good idea maybe to present together. That introduces somebody new to the concept and maybe takes the pressure off of having to present by yourself. Um, when creating a presentation or considering a presentation, it is always good for us to have multiple viewpoints. So if you're looking at maybe having two or three presenters, maybe really having a two-year, a four-year, a public, a private, really kind of representing the, the breadth of who we are, if at all possible. Sometimes the topic doesn't afford that because you're talking about something specific at your institution. But we've seen some great presentations as well that also cross over between like registrar admission, financial aid. We've had people bring other people from the outside that would never normally attend the conference to really hit the point home of how we collaborate and work together. Um, we're always looking for um, what is the experience? And positives and negatives is the experience. Both are good. We're not looking for everything to be successful. A good presentation could be, let me tell you about something I tried and how we failed at it, but what we learned. Um, that, that's invaluable. Not, not a lot of us always get that opportunity. So when we can learn from each other in failure, even better. Always, uh, of course, the annual meeting provides an opportunity for us to learn something new and discuss new topics. Um, or if you just know, like you saw a great presentation if you went to your local state or regional, or you happened to participate in something else and you're like, I can do that, T trust your gut. That we're submit, submit, submit. We have a lot of slots to fill um, and we a lot of topics to cover. And so don't ever think that, oh no, nobody wants to hear this, or this isn't a good idea, or someone else is gonna submit it. You never know. And sometimes if we get two or three of the same submission, we know we have a hot topic like we talked about. We have come together and say, would you all be willing to do a panel presentation? Because this really seems to be hitting home. There's a, quite a few types of presentations. And as we transition into and Seth talks a little bit about the system, you will see some of that, but um, standard. So single pre presenter session, obviously, just one of us standing up there and doing the presentation. A panel discussion or presentation is gonna be two or more people. Um, panels, I would say probably are in the four to five person range. Once you get past five, it can become a little unwieldy, especially in like a 45 minute time frame or 50 minute time frame. Round tables, we get these, we get these in droves um, and they're great, great items of what are things that we're not sure, um, but it's a hot topic uh, and we vary them. We, we rotate them around. So a good example would be there's been a large table registrar when there's been medium, there's been small. We, and they can't always happen every single year because sometimes we have to afford for other groups like the veterans group or faith-based registrars. Um, we could probably fill our entire annual meeting with nothing but round tables if we needed to. And so one of the things that we do, you'll see a couple bullets down, we refer to the stop and share model, is if we have a ton of round tables one year, a lot of times we'll look at those topics that have been submitted and we'll say maybe those can turn into some great stop and share items, which is something that's been around for about three, four years now. Um, and it, it's growing and it's, it's kind of a great one-off way to have people just show up and have a topic, which is 
kind of similar to a round table. It's just not scheduled at a specific slot and time. We have 11, maybe 12 caucuses now with the women's caucus coming on. So there's a lot of um, presentations that come out of the caucuses, but they have also have some dedicated presentation time. Um, and those are invaluable, great um, groups to go to. They are all open, so whatever caucus interests you or if there's something that interests you and you think it aligns with the caucus, submit. <laughs> um, you do not have to be a member of the caucus to submit a topic for presentation of the caucus. Poster sessions, same thing. You never know, a presentation idea might turn into a poster session where if someone is really nervous about presenting, or you are yourself, consider a poster session as a way to do that, which is basically creating one, like a slide, one or two slides, and you're gonna print it really big, on, <laughs> and we're gonna put it on a board, and there's a dedicated time where you can talk about your topic. Um, this is really common in higher education, but if you've never done one, there's probably lots of resources. You can reach out into your campus within your own faculty who have done these, um, or you can always reach out to ECRO, and we could probably connect you with someone who's been successful with poster sessions. It's, it's a great introduction to that presentation um, room that we're in, uh, especially for new people, and you could put them together as well as maybe two people putting together a poster session. So all of these great topics we have, um, if they don't get selected, an, al an alternate session could even turn into a poster session. Workshops, as many of you know, or if you have not had an opportunity to attend, we have some standard workshops that seem to happen every year, like Registrar 101, FERPA, but we are always looking for new ideas for workshops or, or big topics that might turn into a workshop um, where we need a little bit more time on that Saturday, Sunday morning time frame to really dive deep into whatever the, the area is. If you have a really great idea that you think would be a great workshop, you can submit that and say, I think this is a great workshop idea. And then corporate sessions, something to keep in mind, and one of the things is um, if they are a company and they were going to present with you, that is a corporate session that doesn't fall under to the, the regular sessions. And the, the, our vendors have slotted time as well to present. Um, big key ideas where so if if you want to you know do that great thing about hey we have this new scheduling software we're using this is the vendor and we want to talk about how we implemented it um, the vendor would not be with you or it would be classified as a corporate session so those are some things to keep in mind if you have questions when you're working through that you can always email email us email acro and we can always help clarify if there's any questions as you're targeting, if you're considering presenting um, or <coughs> you are reaching out and finding presenters, this is where, um, this is some things to consider. You could, you could submit yourself on five, six different presentations, but when, when the committees come together and we really start the scheduling process, one of the things we are very conscious of is that no one person presents more than twice. And that's a, a single presentation being part of a panel or any other combination there. We try very hard for that to not occur because that allows that larger breadth of our entire membership body to be chosen um, and have the opportunity to, to shine and present different ideas and see different ideas and ways of implementing the same topic um, year after year. Sometimes it may not work out that way, but we work very hard to catch it like this. So just kind of keep that in mind is if you have the same person or you're thinking of submitting four or five, we're going to narrow that down for you when we select. Um, and, and that's not that we don't love you and don't want you to do it. We just want to open the door for others. I mentioned it, institution type, location, demographics. We all have diversity missions at our own home and institution, and as a membership, we should consider the diversity of our presentation, or especially if we're doing a, pre a panel, uh, that we are representing the, the larger body of our membership and group. If you are not sure, you can always email the PAC chairs where they're all listed out there for the program committee, 
Um, and they may be able to connect you with some other people. If you're like, I'm really interested in doing this, I don't mind doing it in a panel, um, but I'm not quite sure. I don't really have a network of two-year institutions or four-year institutions. Do you happen to know anyone or can you get me in contact with anyone? We have a great network and resources where we could probably assist you or give you some people that you could reach out to. And then if you're attending your regional or state, um, really look at the presentations that happen there. Sometimes they're very unique and we don't get those many times um, to submit to the annual meeting and we would love for more of that to happen. But there's something really unique going on in your state or regional that we should, a presentation would be great for. Those are great things to just pick up or encourage them to submit to the annual meeting. That's the 50,000 foot view of kind of setting up your presentation, walking through um, some things to think about. And now I'm going to turn it over to Seth, who's going to talk a little bit about how the system works. Okay, thanks, Kelly. <clears throat> All right, so what we're going to talk about for a few minutes here is actually how to submit a session. Um, we do have a new database. We did launch it last year, and based on feedback both from those who had presented as well as attendees at the LA conference, we've made some changes so that we have more information about each session so that we can present more information about each session uh, in the app and prior to the conference and during the conference so you can better choose per sessions that might uh, meet your interests or, or uh, research area or something of the nature where you know you're you're going to get something out of that. So in order to submit a session, these are the different items that you actually need to fill out the form. Now, some of them are pre-populated. Some of them are just a pick menu. Um, but as you're thinking about what you need to fill out the form, these are the different areas. And I'm going to go through each one of them as we're actually filling out the form. Um, but I wanted to give you sort of a quick snapshot so you could see them prior to going into the actual process of evaluating the um, uh, session entry. So to access the database, you're going to go ahead to the website, and you can go ahead either through this URL or while you're on the ACRA website, go to the 2020 meeting, and on the right hand, it says uh, submit a session. Uh, you will need to log into the database using your ACRA credentials. If you don't know them, you can go ahead and get them through the process to do that. If you are not a member of ACRA, you can create a guest profile to submit a, uh, a session. So you have the option either of being a member or not being a member. We do not prevent you from submitting a session simply because of that opportunity. Once you're in the session, you're going to see a screen that looks like this. Uh, this is mine. And uh, you'll see that either you have review your old excuse me your old submissions or you can click to begin a new submission. Most often than not, you will be clicking to submit a new uh, session. If you've started a session and you've saved it and you want to go back in and finish it or complete it or edit it, that is where you could go ahead and click that top one. But most more often than not, you're going to go ahead and click here to begin a new submission. When you click that, uh, the first screen that's going to come up is what we consider the primary presenter screen. And this is going to automatically populate with your ACRO information because you logged in with your credential. If you are uh, presenting as a presenter and you're submitting as a presenter and you're going to be one of the presenters, then you can go ahead and leave your information in here. If there's something incorrect in this information, you actually want to make that update through the membership database. Uh, and through this. If you make a change here to your title or to a spelling of your name, it won't change in the actual ACRO member database, which is where you actually want it. That's your official record. Uh, so you'll need to log in and fix it on that end as well. Um, if you are submitting a session for somebody else, so you are a uh, a representative of a group and you're not the primary presenter or perhaps you are a, a pack chair or something, a member, and you're submitting it for somebody else, you actually need to put that primary presenter's information into this system instead. Remove yourself and put somebody else in. So if I was submitting for Kelly, I'd go ahead and remove my email address, my name, last name, and all that information, and I'd go ahead and put all of Kelly's information in there instead. And if you choose the email address uh, of a person who is currently a member of ACRO, this will populate with their contact information from the database. So you don't need it all. Uh, once you've done that, or if there is no change, then you can go ahead and either hit the Save or the Save and Next button. The Save button will just go ahead and save this, but not move you to the next screen. You can log out, and it will come back, and that session will be saved for you. Or if you hit Save and Next, you'll move on to the next screen, uh, which is where you continue to enter the information. 
So in terms of data entry, as I mentioned, there's a bunch of things you need to do uh, and, and have before you start. So the first thing is the actual title. And you have 130 characters to enter this title. Uh, please use a title that is engaging. Use a title that tells a little bit about what the session itself actually is. Um, you can be cute with the title, but if it's really, really obscure or uh, a little provocative, we've had some very provocative ones, I tell you, um, or if it really doesn't explain what the session is, we might ask you to go ahead and come up with something new. So it's really important that you use a title that's, that reflects what the actual presentation is. The session type is that pull-down menu, and that is the list that Kelly went over earlier in the past slide about which type of session you're looking for. Uh, the program description and then the review description, these are two usually very similar content, but one of them is short and one of them is long. The long is available for review uh, on the website, and the short one is the one that actually shows up in the app at the actual conference. So you want to make sure that, again, they are very specific. They are to the point. They're going to tell everybody what it is that this session is all about. The system will check for spelling and some other things, so do not worry. We will also do a spell check before we go to print uh, or go live on the app. The next things that you're going to choose is the committee. Uh, if you don't know the structure of how we are set up for actually developing the program, there are seven committees, called program uh, committees, uh, based on different areas that are within ACRO. And underneath each one of these groups is then a whole bunch of professional activities uh, committees, PACs, uh, in different areas. So every single session that we have is assigned to both a program committee as well as a PAC. So if you were to choose admissions and enrollment management, the next thing that would pop up would be a list of all of the program, uh, programs underneath the admissions and enrollment management, the different tracks. And you can see that whole list by clicking on that link there, who we are, committees and committee list. Now it's okay if, if you just choose one because you think that's in the right spot. We will go in and check and see and reassign and move things around if we think that they might fit into something different or better. The reason that we have this is so that students, uh, students, so that attendees can actually go ahead and choose uh, sessions based on perhaps a particular area that they are interested in. So if they are a, rec a registrar, they might see that Group C is really, really want to be, and they can do a search on all of the Group 3 sessions. Uh, the learning outcomes, uh, these are required, and these are three things that somebody should expect to learn from the session. Now, these are not one-word answers. Uh, you really should be thinking sort of about how you might do a course outcome within your own institution, uh, perhaps use Bloom's taxonomy, but go ahead and put something really specific about what it is that they're going to learn. Don't, don't just write networking or transfer stuff or how to be a registrar. Something a bit more in-depth, a bit more measurable would be good for those learning outcomes. And again, three of them are required. The next thing that you're going to answer is the core competencies and the proficiencies. If you're not familiar with these, we do have the links to each one of those. These are overarching themes, ideas, concepts, um, things that ACRO staff, faculty, members uh, have said are things that related to the core competencies for our profession. So you choose one of the core competencies and then you choose one of the proficiencies. Now not every session is going to have a proficiency, so this is not a required field, although every session should fit under one of the core competencies. The intended audience is the next one, and that is simply who you think would benefit from your session, and you do choose one of those. The next one is the intended institutional audience. Now, this is an actual new uh, field that we've added based on feedback from attendees in LA. They really felt like they could use some additional information about whether or not they were going to get anything from a session, uh, whether or not it applied to their institution or not. So you would actually go ahead and choose one, two, three, four, any of the ones that might fit into this. So if you're doing a session that is really, really been going to be benefit um, military serving institutions because you're going to talk about how to recruit military students, you can go ahead and check that, check that one. If you're doing the small registrar's roundtable, then perhaps you would just want to choose the small institutions one. Um, if you are presenting on how to retain uh, community college students, then the community college to your institution might be the one that you check. These will be printed in the app uh, so that they'll actually have a little bit more uh, direction and they'll also be something that we can search on uh, as we go through. You can check everything that's related to graduate or law school only sessions, et cetera.
The next thing you want to look for is uh, the length of sessions. And this year, we've changed things up a bit. As I mentioned, we, we kind of redid a lot of the program to compensate for the fact that we were in New Orleans and that we wanted to have a later start and we wanted to have more session opportunities. So instead of the normal 60 or 75-minute sessions, we now have 45-minute and 75-minute sessions. Uh, this actually allowed us to add 20 more sections to the program itself. Uh, so you'll choose whether 45 minutes or 75 minutes. Uh, and it's important that you choose wisely um, because we will slot you into one of those time lots. And if you are uh, think that you can finish in 45 minutes, but you want the 75 minutes just for questions, uh, we would ask you to really reconsider about whether or not you can make your session 40 minutes and do on a 45 minute session instead. Estimated attendance, you get to choose the numbers. These numbers actually influence which classrooms that we put you in at the, at the venue. Uh, which rooms are set up for 25 people, which rooms are set up for 50, which rooms are set up for 100. Uh, so we, we would ask you to be uh, conservative and realistic. Uh, if it's a presentation that you've given before, Four and you've only had 20 people in it, please don't put the JITs for 50 or 75 people. Uh, if it's a topic that is very narrow in scope and only a certain type of institution is going to attend, please be conservative in thinking that, okay, there are probably about 50, 25, 50, not 100, 150, because there's simply not 100 or 150 institutions that might fit into that profile. Uh, webinar authorization, whether or not you'd be interested in uh, doing a webinar or having your session put out as a webinar during the conference. Uh, Internet access, this is simply a, a statement here. Um, and then AV request. Standard AV in each room would be a computer and a projector and a screen. If you need additional information, uh, then you go ahead and choose uh, the information below. Please be mindful, of course, that every time that we request one of these items, it does cost ACRO uh, additional funds. So again, please be conservative, thoughtful, thinkful uh, as you're going through this. If you don't need anything additional, you do need to click that no additional AV required. Uh, the system will not let you submit unless you choose that box. Additional presenters. This is if you're doing a panel, you're doing more than one person as a presenter or two people. Um, this is where you would go ahead and add the second presenter. Now you would not put in the same person that you put in as the primary presenter on the first screen if that person is presenting. And again, that person should be presenting. It should not be you submitting your information as a uh, submitter. So if you are the primary you put yourself on the first tab, and there's additional person that's presenting, and you go ahead and add them as an additional presenter. Um, if there is multiple people, you can add multiple names to this, but it should not be a duplicative of the first person that you entered. Um, so either yes, there will be additional presenters, or no, there was only one. If you click yes, you do have to go ahead and enter their information. If they are a member of ACRO, it is simply a search. If they are not a member of ACRO, you will need to add in their information. Based on who it is that you're entering, there might be some additional steps steps that you need to take, which we'll talk about in the next slide. Once you uh, are done with this, you can hit save. Save does not submit it. Save simply saves it so that you can go ahead and, and come back to it at a later point. Uh, while this is in five or six different screenshots, this is actually one full row, uh, page. So you can get as far as intended audience and hit save and come back later and finish the rest of them, uh, rest of the fields and finish as you go along there. Um, save and finalize means that you're saving it and that you are submitting it. And you do have the ability to change it after the fact, uh, but this is really when you should be putting things in when you're done, ready to go ahead and present, uh, submit it for uh, review. After the session is submitted, uh, we wanted to let you know what happens, because very often we don't actually tell people what happens after the session is submitted. So after the session is submitted, the Professional Activities Committee chair reviews the, 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 the form, and the, the committee itself actually reviews it as well. Um, what they're looking for is to see whether or not it fits into their area, whether or not you have filled out all the forms correctly, whether there are duplicates, uh, whether uh, it is of interest to uh, a large group of the population or a small group of the population, but they're also looking at the presenters, uh, and they're making sure that there aren't additional information that's needed, as I mentioned a bit earlier. If you are presenting with a corporate sponsor, uh, and it should be a corporate presentation, uh, then there is additional forms that have to be filled out. 
If you are presenting with somebody who is not an ACRO member, you need to have an additional form that needs to be filled out. If you are requesting that a person who is presenting with you uh, receives uh, an, a waiver to attend the conference for the one day, there is an additional form that you need to fill out. If you are submitting a workshop, there's an additional form to fill out. And all of those are available on the website. So it's really important. But the PAC chair or the program committee uh, coordinator will be in contact with you for additional information about which forms might need to be filled out. So once the PAC chair and the PAC committee go ahead and review and make recommendations, the program committee, uh, and there are nine of us, will be meeting, uh, and we go ahead and actually review and schedule the sessions. And what, uh, in, in true simple format, we actually put a whole bunch of uh, sticky notes up on a wall and move them around into the different time slots to figure out uh, where everybody should be presenting, so nobody's presenting at the same time, there aren't too many topics at the same topic presented each session, etc. So we do all of that. Once we've made that schedule, we then go ahead and notify the presenter whether you have been accepted, whether you are determined to be an alternate, whether we have declined your application, um, or whether or not we should recommend a poster session or stop and share. Once you receive that email saying one of those things, uh, you need to go ahead and accept or decline the offer. Uh, and that is a separate process that Kelly is going to talk about in just a moment uh, when we talk about our timeline. Um, so once we have this, this, this uh, is really where you are committing yourself to going ahead and, and doing a session. Now, just because you commit yourself, if something happens, then all you need to do is go ahead and email uh, the program chair or the program committee member, uh, whoever sent you the email, and say, you know what, something's changed and I'm not able to go ahead and present anymore or I'm not able to attend the conference. That is where the alternates come in. These are people who we have chosen to say, yes, we want, but we don't have a room yet. Let's see if we can slot you sometime later closer to the actual uh, conference. So sometime in December, you might get an email that says, are you still interested in presenting because we'd like to slot you? We'd like to, to accept your submission, in which case you then have the opportunity to say yes or no. Uh, and that process will go up right up until about the end of February, where we might still be uh, removing sessions and adding new ones, etc. So it's a very fluid uh, process in terms of building the program, almost sometimes right up until the day of the actual program when we actually finally have a set schedule. So with that, uh, that is how you actually submit a session and what happens after you hit submit the session. Uh, and now Kelly's going to go back to talking about uh, what the schedule is. So as many of you may know or don't know, the um, database has already been open for 24 days. And so you can go out there or we, we do know some of you have already started pre um, the process and saved, maybe not submitted yet. The deadline is in a month, um, exactly a month from today, to submit the session. Um, and then as Seth kind of mentioned a little bit, what will happen is those will all pull together. And a month from then, all of the chairs of the committees, um, the program coordinators, that's what I show us, we come together at the annual leadership meeting. And we do some session planning as a group. We look at how we're going to, you know, how things are ranked, what we're looking for, what are some of the hot topics we've seen. And that's when we're going to actually go in and put together the schedule that you see on the app. And we're gonna, it's like first round, it starts, we're gonna identify um, who, who was accepted, who, you, know, you know, who we, and who we're looking for as an alternate. And um, then in, it takes a little bit to work through all of that. So September, we all, cause we all have uh, lots of things to do usually in the July, August timeframe. So after Labor Day, we start the email process out to everyone, letting them know if they've been accepted, if they've been chosen as an alternate, if for any reason it was declined, it could be that you went and declined it yourself. Um, and then we give you a little bit of time to work through going in and confirming. That's also a very simple process. It's not like it used to be if you presented in the past where you had to email back. There's a link, you go in, you say, yes, I agree to present, or no, unfortunately, I cannot. That all logs in the system. And really between October and the annual meeting is where we're continuing to monitor, maintain, see if for any reason we have to pull into the alternate pool and we're building out that schedule and getting everything prepared for the annual meeting. And from there, that's kind of, <laughs> we're open for questions. That's everything we've got. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, so uh, 
Yeah, I was going to say, everyone, you can utilize the questions tab on the uh, webinar dashboard thing you've got there, the chat window, um, or I can just open the uh, the phone lines up. All Let's right. open the phone lines up. All right. All right. So I'm going to go through and unmute everybody here. Um, I would ask that uh, you try not to... Uh, speak over each other if you can. It's going to be 6300 bucks. I don't think it's that much more. Oh, we'll mute that one there. <laughs> there right, I it, put it at three bucks for sure. Plus the additional. It, I think. Well, I put 21. Or maybe we can't unmute everybody. Yeah, it is not. free. It is free to submit. Do not worry. It is free to submit. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I might just go through and yeah, I think we've got to use the text one still. Oh, I see one person with their Michelle Weller. You are unmuted. Michelle, did you have a question? Oh, her hand was raised an hour ago, so <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> All right. It it sounds like we don't have any uh, any questions, but if you do have questions in the future, uh, our email address is there, programchair at acro.org, uh, and you can certainly email us, and Kelly and I do check that email address on a pretty regular basis, um, or you can go ahead and um, ask your program committee coordinator uh, or your PAC chair or, or a PAC member, if you're familiar with any of those, any questions as well. Uh, this PowerPoint okay. present. Oh. Uh, sorry to interrupt. We did. Uh, we did get some questions here. Oh, all right. Start reading all right. Aloud here. Um, so uh, Annie asks, if I submit a webinar on behalf of my colleague, will I be notified of additional paperwork, or uh, will my colleague? Uh, the primary presenter will be notified. So if it is your colleague that is. Uh, the primary presenter, which it should be if they are the one that is presenting, uh, then they are the ones that will be contacted about additional information. All right, awesome. Uh, and then uh, Brooke Rawson asks if there is a database of previous presentations that we can review, uh, just, uh, just to avoid duplication of research or you know, just content in general. You can always look on the uh, program, uh, excuse me, the websites for the past conferences. Uh, each one of those either has the print graphic available um, or you can do a searchable online database. So by going to the ACRA website uh, and going to past meetings and choosing those, you can look and see what was presented at each conference. And we do not have uh, another way of doing uh Unfortunately, doing what it is that you're asking, um, but I would I would say that even if it was presented, if you're looking at it from a different perspective, from a different institution size, from a different technology standpoint, um, or if you perhaps have different results or something, uh, then then still submit a presentation based on that. One of the things that we often try and do is to find out how things were three, four, five years after they were first presented on. Um, so, you know, we're doing this now three, four years later. We want to know how it went. Uh, and research is the same idea. So research from three or four years ago could be considerably different now based on uh, various numbers of factors. So while that's a, that's a great idea, uh, don't let that stop you from actually submitting a session based on your research or your ideas. And those are all the questions thus far. Uh, I don't know if we want to give people another minute. And so, I was sorry to interrupt your ending spiel there, Seth. So no, that's no. I, I wasn't the end, so it was good. <laughs> um, I think we're good. All right? Is that it? That is it. Then yeah. Uh, thanks all right. For well, joining everybody. Thank you, everybody. Have thank a you. great rest of your day. Now I've got to figure out how to hang everybody up.